Mr. Vice Chairman, I rise to associate myself fully with the resolution and the concern which has been expressed from all the various sections of the House regarding the urgent necessity of developing rural industries. As time passes by, we are reaching a situation in our rural areas where something desperate needs to be done immediately if we want to preserve the social stability of the country and also to see that full use is made of the time and talent of the people in the rural areas which go west today. As has been pointed out in the resolution, sir, the Planning Commission and the Government of India have applied their minds to the various isolated aspects of rural industries and some valuable reports have been published and some important recommendations have been made in these reports which need consideration but unfortunately there is no high level decision regarding the various issues which face the country as far as the problem of rural industrialization is concerned we are not quite clear as to what first of all rural industries mean and what rural industrialization implies does rural industrialization mean the utilization of local resources in order to meet the local needs or does rural industrialization imply the creating of surplus in the rural areas which could be exchanged with the surplus in other centers of the country and thereby create a richer life for the rural areas. Various opinions have been expressed with regard to this problem, but there is no authoritative determination of the policy regarding the meaning of rural industrialization. It has been suggested that if such report of capital and skill from urban centers were to mean merely the multiplication of industrial centers in the rural areas, such an industrialization of the rural areas would nullify the advantages that are likely to accrue as a result of the rural industrialization. The time has come when some decision has to be taken as to what we really mean by this rural industrialization. There is also difference of opinion regarding the authority that should undertake the responsibility for this rural industrialization. From the literature that has been published in this connection, it is quite obvious that two distinct and powerful schools have developed regarding this issue. On the one hand, there are people who believe 
that the task of rural industrialization should be entrusted to the village panchayats since they represent the village people and they have the resources and the powers to raise the necessary resources from the rural areas the panchayats it is felt are the competent authorities to deal with the problem of rural industrialization equally strongly it has been argued by others that cooperatives are the right answer to the question as to which should be the authority that should deal with rural industrialization i may also mention that there is a third school which believes that the import of private capital and private skill into the work of rural industrial development is the real answer to the problem which we face in the matter of rural industrialization here again some authoritative determination of the policy has become necessary because in the absence of such a policy ad hoc decisions are taken which sometimes cancel each other and therefore the rapid progress which we hope and wish for in rural industrialization becomes impossible then again there is the future question of protection that may be necessary for rural industries in view of the lack of the internal economy from which rural industries would suffer whatever may be the answer to the first two questions professor malkani has already referred to this question and various suggestions have been put forward but all these suggestions require some detailed consideration as there are a large number of difficulties in implementing any one of these suggestions demarcation of markets and the imposition of taxes in order to see that goods from the urban centers do not reach the rural centers in unfairly competitive conditions are some of the suggestions that have been made one great advantage of a vast country is the large number of markets that are available for the goods that are produced in the country however if these markets are artificially restricted and goods are not allowed to move from one center to another i am afraid more problems would be raised than solved if this protection is sought to be given in this manner yet protection has to be given to the rural industries if these rural industries are to develop therefore serious and competent thinking is necessary in this connection and again time is running fast therefore it is desirable that we should have some authority which could examine the various issues involved and determine the policy with regard to this matter